Hey there, I am about to start tiling this wall. I'm going to go all the way up on this side right behind the vanity and about halfway up on this wall. I'm going to have to make cuts around the light fixture and the outlet. Normally you would want to tile behind a light fixture. This one that we bought unfortunately won't let us do that. Um, the extenders aren't long enough to bring it out over the tile. So I'm going to have to cut around it. It's not ideal, but it'll be fine. I'm about to start tiling. I'm excited. I hope you all are too. The tools I'm going to be using today are this type 1 tile adhesive. I'm going to spread it just with this, whatever it's called, then this V-notch tapered straight edge. There are three sizes of teeth and let's you choose between different sizes. This match for the size of tile that you use. Um, so you can make bigger, small notches if you have little mosaic tiles or larger tiles like I have. Now, before we get these tiles on the wall, I wanted to lay out everything. I measured the exact dimensions so that I could tape it out on the floor. This will allow me to lay out the exact pattern I want to do and also make sure that I have enough tiles for the whole project. I did also briefly try another pattern, but I quickly decided that is not the direction I wanted to go in and I was happy with the vertical subway tiles that I had decided on. I'm going to do two full tiles high and all the way to the ceiling on this side. Let's dive into tiling. So you're gonna take your tile adhesive, put it on a putty knife and just smear it all over the wall. So once you have a nice thick layer of tile adhesive on the wall, you will then take your notched trowel to make horizontal lines for your tile to attach to. With single tiles like I have, you'll take each tile and press it firmly into the tile adhesive, wiggle it around just a little bit to make sure you get a really good suction there. I started my tile pattern in a vertical upward row. I started here because I thought it was the easiest way to get started and I wanted to make sure that this row was very level. Even though the tile may not be perfectly against the wall, I can fill it in with grout, but I want to make sure that it is a level line and make sure it doesn't tilt as the pattern goes on. Once I got my first row complete, I came back to the bottom to fill out the pattern across the wall behind the sink. You do want to work in small sections because you do not want your tile adhesive drying before you get your tile up there. I for some reason am working in very small sections. You don't have to work in that small section. That's just what I was doing because this is my first time tiling and I wanted to make sure I was doing a good job. This did take a little bit more time and effort because I am doing the tiles on an offset subway pattern. I needed to measure the halfway point and I'm planning on using all my full tiles before making all of my cuts. So since I have 12 inch tiles, I measured six inches up from the top of the sink to allow for a half tile that I will cut down. I did this stagger pattern across the top of the vanity and will fill in the pattern above my base here. Once I got that first layer of tiles down, it was really, really easy to continue the pattern from there because all of the measuring was done and aside from leveling each tile as I went, it went super fast from here. And if you notice that white spot above the light fixture, that is a sneak peek to our video for next week. Okay, let's take a look at what happens when you don't use the proper amount of tile adhesive or press it on properly. So I figured out after I did this that the tile didn't line up with the bottom vanity. I found it out after because I didn't start the tile at the very bottom, I started it six inches up. So it's just a little off, but it bugs me. So I am trying to pry this off and I apparently did not use enough mortar or press it on enough because it pops right off. It has these couple spots that you can see the tile is pressed into and that's about it. It's, you can still see the ridges 
on the tile adhesive. So when I redo this, I need to press it in more. I have my wet tile all set up. Um, I have a little water in it. One of the things that we read on the instructions is to never turn it on without there being water in it. I haven't used this before. It's brand, brand new. I haven't even tiled before, actually, before this project, but I'm gonna work this, see if we can get everything done, and then we'll be done. We're gonna finish up the tile today. I was waiting because I had to make two special cuts around the outlets. So it's easy to make a cut like this. You dip it in and then go along. On the back side, you'll get a little extra cut. Cut it with the top up, then the extra cut will be on the back and you'll be fine. I'm gonna cut these now, and what I'm gonna have to do is make cuts along where I need the outlet to go, and then I'm gonna take my Dremel and score along this back edge and just break it off and it hopefully will be a clean cut. Now we're just gonna finish up tiling by placing all of the cut tiles where they're supposed to go. For the light switch and the outlet, I am unscrewing the screws from the junction box to bring them out forward so that I can tile behind the outlet and light switch so they sit flush when the tiling is done. Now when tiling, one thing you want to make sure to do is when you're finished putting the tile up, to wipe off all the extra tile adhesive that squeezes through the cracks and gets on the face of the tile. Because if you don't do that, then afterwards you have to come back and scrape it all off with a putty knife. And that's just a lot of extra time and work. But I'm not gonna show you that process because you're just gonna listen to me do it the right way the first time, and then we don't have to worry about it, right? You're just gonna be better than me. All right. Before grouting, I am going to wipe down the whole surface of all the tile. I have my sponge and bucket of water. We're gonna wipe it down and dry it. Make sure it's completely dry before doing the grout. All right, we are about to make our grout. You can buy it pre-mixed. I actually bought a bag of dry sanded grout because it was on clearance. I did want the charcoal color. Um, I ended up with pewter because I didn't check the color when they gave it to me at pickup. So we're gonna try this and see how it looks and we can make adjustments if it does not look good. These are all the supplies I'm gonna be using. I have a bucket with water in there, the right amount I just measured out. This is the bucket I'm gonna be mixing in. I have a scale to measure out exactly how much grout I need, and a measuring cup, scissors, and a drill with a mixing bit on it just to help mix everything really quickly. And it's all sitting on some thick plastic so I don't get any on my tongue. I wiped everything down with a sponge and as I put it on I'm going to use this rubber float and take it at a 45 degree angle as I spread it across and I'll probably do the same thing for this. So let's get started.
One section done, this whole wall to go. To finish the edges of the tile, I took painter's tape, placed it about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the tile. Then I filled the space between the tile and the painter's tape with grout and used a similar method as you would to remove caulk to smooth the grout down. Once it's smoothed to your liking, remove the tape right away before the grout dries for a clean, crisp line. You just saw Ruth install the tile, do the grouting, and we've given it a quick wipe over to get it nice and clean. And now we are ready to install the faucet. So it's a little bit tight underneath for all these connections. So there won't be too much of a in progress video that you've seen in some of these other ones. So it'll kind of be more of a before and after type thing. But the installation of the faucet can be quite easy. It just looks a little daunting. So these are eight inch faucets that are separate. So we have three separate holes. So we have our hot water nub, cold water nub, and the faucet as we saw. Uh, we also have our new water lines for hot and cold. And then we also have the other water lines that go from the nubs to the faucet. Uh, the basic of the installation is going to be we're going to install the knobs down into the holes, tighten them down with, this, with the grommets and the rubber gaskets, everything it needs. Once they're in place, we move to installing the actual hardware for the water lines. Uh, we're going to have a T-joint connect to this down here, which will intake both the hot and cold water. From that T-joint, these two smaller lines will be out and connect to our hot and cold knobs. And then onto the hot and cold from the actual water line supply will be these fans and those cables here, the water line. So, like I said, we won't be able to see the in progress, which not much to really see, but it would just be down there, you'd see some hands fumbling around as we kind of got through it. So it's probably for the best. So instead we might use it a little movie magic. So it worked. Well there you have it. You didn't get to see how it was put in. Really simple in theory, right? It's it's tight spaces, it's working through all that, finagling the connections, making sure they're going to the right place squaring off these edges. Every faucet is going to be a little different on its instructions and how it's set up, but it basically goes in, you thread it on, it gets tight, then you put in your water lines. And if you have them spread like this, like I said before, it goes from your supply out to each knob, and from each knob, the new set of lines come out into a T-joint that connects to the faucet itself directly. Then, you can test your water up. Turn on the water supply first, because that should have been cut off already. When you turn it back on, just kind of give it a second to pressurize the line, Give it a listen, look around, make sure that there's no leaks before you continue pouring further. And then you go do this test where you close your drain and then you just run the water. And then you make sure that while the drain is closed, that you're not leaking any water down the well. Right? You want to make sure that you're not leaking anything down there and that's actually holding the water. Here we are holding the water, hot and cold are both running. They are connected in the right direction as well. Um, and then you would also test to make sure that when draining, as I went there, you don't have leaks coming through your drainage as well if you did it correctly. You want to do it in small little steps so that it's not one big mess and you don't know where it's leaking from. Is it from the supply line? Is it from the feed-in lines? Little by little so you can eliminate as you go if you did make some mistakes. A couple tips, uh, make sure you do use some thread sealant. You can use the little ribbons or the actual putty. I have the ribbons to put those on. Those do help with the sealing so that there is no liquid or water coming out. Easy peasy, very hard tight spaces, a lot of personal involved. Um, just be a little careful. I cut myself while doing it on some very sharp threads. So there you have it. We have the faucet, we have the vanity installed, we have a wonderfully tiled uh, backsplash here with grabbing into this very nice charcoal look. And we have this light up here, which is actually another video coming up that you'll get to see. There's actually a bit of electrical work that went into it. That light is another light, and you'll see that in another video. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and you can see all the videos coming up. See you all later. Bye.